Once a project starts, lots of times it can spiral out of control in a hurry. That's exactly what happened with my Pro Street Mustang project when I decided to go all in with the twin Pro Charge Kazi Boss 9 engine. Pull up a chair and I'll tell you all about it because a new episode of Fuel Auto Media powered by Performance Engineering is coming up. Hey everybody, Toby here with Fuel Auto Media TV, helping you connect, learn, and grow in the high performance street machine, pro street, and door slammer drag race world. On this channel, we do car features, tech how-tos, interviews with industry experts, and commentaries on the automotive aftermarket, and other stuff just like this. So if you're new here, smash that subscribe button so you can get notified every time we drop new content. Let's get to it. In episode one of this series, I showed you all the planning involved and we talked about the steps that I took in planning my late model Pro Street build. Way back in January 2014, I put 10 grand down and dropped my car off at Gebhardt's Pro Cars in Jacksonville, Illinois for a full tube chassis. Rich was a legendary builder from back in the 1980s and I'd always loved his late model builds like his Cavalier Z24 and his orange Beretta with the V6 in it. They were super cool, and I always thought it would be awesome to see a late model car that had never been given the Pro Street treatment done up in full-blown 80s style. He had several other cars in the shop ahead of me, and the plan was for him to finish those up in the next two or three months while I gathered up the parts and decided on a number of the specifics that would impact the build. The most important one was what I was going to do for power. Initially, we had a modest budget of $50,000. However, everything changed when I got a second job in December 2013 with RPM Magazine. Suddenly, the car wasn't just going to be a build of mine. It was going to be a magazine project car. And I now had the ability to get sponsorships for free or discounted parts. With the budget now effectively taken off, I decided to swing for the fences and spare absolutely no expense. I figured between the sponsorships and the extra income from my second job with RPM, I could probably extend that build for a full two years and a budget safely around 150K in actual dollars. I considered a Ford Illuminator boost ready crate motor, thinking that it was late model, but ultimately I decided on what I thought was the ultimate Ford engine, an all aluminum Kazi Boss 9. Now, if you're not familiar with the Boss 9, it's basically John Causey's take on the legendary Boss 429 Ford Hemi. I bought a CNC Motorsports aluminum block, a Cali's crank, and Cali's I-beam rods, custom diamond pistons with a high-tech coating, and gaskets from Molly. A Comp hydraulic roller cam was spec'd out by Billy Godbold from Comp, and ARP fasteners were used throughout. All the parts were shipped directly to Georgia, where Ford Master John Causey, his right man hand Cliff Moore, and the crew would begin the build in the spring once the winter race rush was over. Another lesson, whether it's a fabrication shop or an engine shop, the ones that are the best are usually in demand, and you're usually only able to get in line months in advance unless there's some sort of sudden cancellation. Usually you need to be prepared to wait at least four or five months. Meanwhile, I also decided to go all in on the induction system. I ordered a pair of polished F1C Pro Chargers. Yeah, I said it, a pair. Terry Woods from the Supercharger store mocked up an incredible billet aluminum crank driven gear drive on a Ford Big Block that he had there in the shop. The system was designed to work with a March Performance billet serpentine drive complete with AC, alternator, and even a power steering pump. Once that was done, it was shipped to Kazi as well. When all was said and done, I had nearly as much in engine parts alone as I had originally budgeted for the whole build and hadn't even been put together yet. Pretty easy to see how this stuff spirals out of control, right? More on that next time. But I was learning firsthand just how expensive a no holds barred pro street build could be and just how long it would take. I was five months in and I'd already blown my entire engine budget. The car was over a thousand miles away with little more than cut floor pans to show for my $10,000 investment. 
I'd love to tell you things quickly change for the better, but you'll have to tune in next time to hear what happened next. What about you? Have you gone over budget financially and time-wise on your project car? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to this channel as I take you step by step through every misstep that I made along the way to hopefully someday being able to debut my dream car for all the world to see. If you're watching on Facebook, be sure to check out our website at fuelmediachannel.com. That'll take you directly to our YouTube page where you can subscribe and get updates. Until next time, this is Toby with Fuel Auto Media telling you to keep going, do better, and build something awesome. It's from the Supercharger And Terry Woods from the Supercharger store. That's hard to say. Terry. <laughs>